Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. This is a video about Sedna. Now, um, I'll be completely upfront and honest. I do not claim to be an expert at all when it comes to the um, hyperbelt objects and outer asteroids. But for some reason, Sedna is really speaking to me. So I just wanted to come on and share my sort of thoughts, my insight about what this ingress means. Now, I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer, so I always try and bring in the fixed stars and cosmic connections whenever I'm sharing information about the astrology. And, you know, this is another big event and we have had a series of big events in April. And this is kind of like the closing one, if you will. Um, we have this incredible um, asteroid, Sedna, who is moving into Gemini on Saturday. Now, she was in Gemini briefly last year, but she is making the move now and she will remain in Gemini until 2067. So Sedna is one of the most, or the most outer, the outermost body in our solar system. She has a very slow orbit. She has been in Taurus since 1966. So the fact that she is moving into Gemini is a really big deal, which is the case when any of the sort of outer planets or bodies change sign. And this is a collective shift. So this is energy that is going to affect us at a collective level, more so than any sort of personal transit. Now, I'm not going to talk about the myth or the story of Sedna because I know a lot of other astrologers are sharing that information and it's quite easy to find. But I wanted to just bring forward and focus on the themes and what she represents in the chart. So because she is the furthermost point, she is very much stretching our awareness, stretching our reality and, you know, taking us away taking us out of our day-to-day -day sort of 3D mundane world and taking our awareness way out beyond to anything that we might have considered before. Now, she brings through or stands for themes of betrayal, rejection, abandonment, rebellion comes in there too. She very much shows us where we need to or where we might be called to stand up against control, the patriarchy, and also where we are having to very much let go of what we have always known, what we have relied on, what we trusted, what we thought to be, you know, something that was out to protect us, to look after us, to stand up for us to um, champion us, Sedna is very much um, had to let go of that. And in doing so, she went through the biggest transformation and alchemical shift possible. She had to surrender to go into the depths of the ocean and deal with the pain of that rejection from somebody whom she trusted very much. And through having to adapt to this new reality in the underworld, in the depths of the ocean, in the abyss, if she experienced um, profound rebirth, regeneration, she had to shift, she had to adapt, but she found her power in a very different sort of um, setting from what she may have expected. But she is here to teach us that there is a huge opportunity when we let go of what we sort of have always clung on to, when we let go of any sense of being a victim and we release our attachment to the old ways. You know, there is, she's here to remind us of the potential that lies within each of us to rebirth, to regenerate, to recreate and also she is very much about accessing sort of energies that lie deep within or deep below. And obviously with the recent full moon in Scorpio, this is very much an energy that is prevalent at the moment because Uranus in Taurus 
sort of meeting with Jupiter has really created this massive sort of shake up where what we were relying on, what we knew to be fixed, what was our sort of safety net has now been shattered or burst open, torn apart so that we can access what lies deep beneath. The full moon has shone a light on that and has really encouraged us to face it so that it can be healed. And then very quickly on the back of this full moon in Scorpio, just mere days after, with a Mercury stationing direct in between, we have this ingress or this move of this outer body into the sign of Gemini. So just to remind you, Gemini is the third sign in the zodiac. It is very much linked to the mind, to learning, to our immediate environment. So our neighborhood, our siblings, our local community, but very much about how we learn, what we know, what we think we know. It rules our ideas. It also rules stories and narratives that we may have either been sort of given, that we may have been fed or that we have created ourselves within our own minds and believed to be true. Um, it's linked to mental programming. And also um, spelling came through and the power of spells and the power of our words to create our reality. So this is very much when Sedna is moving into Gemini, you know, we are going to be going deep into the depths. We're going to have this opportunity to access information and understanding that we haven't had access to before. And Sedna also sort of dissolves or melts away that which has become fixed. So again, you know, this is about a real shift and where things have been blocked off perhaps in the past, the, this is no longer going to be the case. And there's new information coming through, but we have to go into the depths. We have to go into the darkness. We have to perhaps step into a world or a reality that is very different to the one that we've been used to because that is where the transformation lies and we are going to have to be able to and have the courage to really take that step to let go of what we thought we knew to let go of the attachment and of course as humans you know we like to know or we like to think we know what we know we like it when things stay the same but actually, you know, this is very much a time of change and this ingress is really supporting yet another layer of that. So, you know, themes of Gemini, Sedna and Gemini coming up are all about releasing us from mind control, from predictive programming, from conditioning, from brainwashing potentially, for, um, from the effect of spells and um, hexes and vows that we may have met or made in the past. All of this is likely to be coming up to be seen, to be experienced, to be acknowledged, and then to be released. There is a new story that can be told, and this is not just about you know what's going on in our current reality, but this is a new story potentially coming forward about the history of our world, about who we are, about how we fit into the bigger picture. It's going to sort of revolutionize our understanding and really force us to shed and let go of what we have been holding on to. Gemini is really asking us to consider and to write a new story, which includes sort of finding a new way to be in our world. How do we fit in in that? What part do we play? Now, what is really interesting, well, there's a few things that are interesting about this um, transit, but we have Sedna will be trining Pluto because Pluto is an Aquarius. So we have these two outer bodies in air signs and this strengthens the air element in the chart. And if you bring in the third sign or point in Libra, the super galactic center at two degrees of Libra, we have this grand air trine. Now, this is something I've talked about before. I will link to the video where I talk about the energies of this grand air trine. But Pluto in particular is really pushing for growth. And this is growth at a soul level. In Aquarius, this is collective. This is growth of humanity 
through understanding, through accessing this information that has been hidden to us before. And it is through this letting go of the old narrative of the old ways, stepping out of our comfort zone and sort of um, considering new ideas and new understanding and new information that is has been hidden deep within our subconscious, but is now there and ready to be seen, to be accessed. Through this new understanding, this is where the evolution and the growth comes. And Pluto is also very much about uncovering that which has been hidden, exposing that which needs to be seen. So the themes are quite similar. Now, with the super galactic center, this is an energy that is really very cosmic, very powerful, and it is pulling us out of sort of our day-to-day reality, stretching our minds, again, which is very Sedna in its... um expression but stretching our minds sort of making us look outside of ourselves in order to come back in and have a greater understanding of who we are so you know these are really powerful powerful energies and because Sedna is going to move so slowly obviously Pluto moves slowly but this trine is going to be active for all of this year pretty much apart from when Pluto jumps back into Capricorn for two months later on in the autumn but it is going to move into 2025 as well so this isn't sort of a you know it's going to happen on saturday and that's it this is a slow steady process a gentle perhaps well hopefully gentle but you know a very deep and profound unraveling of information and understanding and beliefs narratives stories So Sedna is also here to really remind us that sometimes we have to go through crisis or loss or trauma in order to be reborn. And that just seems so fitting for the times that we are in, because although we are all individuals and we all have our own stories, I think almost all of us are going through some sort of level degree of um, shift, of change. It is unsettling. It is challenging. And, you know, I don't think anybody is immune or um, exempt from this experience because it is part of our growth and it is very collective. Now, the other interesting thing is that as Sedna moves into Gemini, she is going to activate stars in the Pleiades. And, you know, the Pleiades are um, sort of one of our closest galactic neighbours in terms of how, you know, their proximity to Earth. They are known as the Seven Sisters. There are many myths and stories about this star system, about these Seven Sisters and the archetypes and what they represent. But as a fixed star, as a galactic energy, sort of lumping them all together just for the purpose of this video, you know, it is very much about an energy of master healing coming through The Pleiadians are our galactic family, our galactic relatives. They are watching on from outside, but very much um, willing us to ascend, willing us to kind of gain a greater spiritual understanding and access more spiritual and enlightened wisdom so that we can start to shift and evolve as a collective. So it feels very much like they are waiting in the wings and it feels that Certainly, you know, this uh, the early part of this transit of Sedna and Gemini is going to activate these stars and the energies and hopefully bring them closer to us so that we can start to access that wisdom and that energy, and um, which is all about unconditional love and coming from the heart. And also truth comes forward very strongly with the Pleiadian energy. So there is a sense that, you know, we are likely to have more connection with these, um, with the Pleiadians as a collective, as a race of beings. And, you know, I would like to think that we're going to have access to the information and the knowledge and wisdom that they are willing or waiting to impart to us in order to support us. Now, just looking at the rest of the chart at the time of this ingress, which always sort of gives us a real sort of flavor for what else is happening and what other energies we're working with. We have Mars in a very close conjunction to Neptune in Pisces. So this is very much about um, sort of giving us a real boost and also bringing us the courage to embrace our creativity through Pisces, to embrace what our spiritual selves, our higher selves and the higher self aspect of us that has maybe been slightly out of reach previously. 
And um, Pisces is very compassionate energy. It's about unity, but it also requires us to step into the void, which is letting go or about letting go of what we know and having the trust and the faith and the ability to surrender, which again is what Sedna had to do. She had to just let go, surrender to her fate and trust that something good would come out of a very traumatic situation. So Mars conjunct Neptune is really giving us a boost to our imagination, but it can also create more illusion. So we need to be mindful of that and very discerning. And um, we have the, the star Shayat in the Pegasus constellation is being activated by this conjunction. So, you know, Pegasus being the way shower, the winged horse, giving us sort of um, the abilities to try to move between dimensions, to go to higher states of being, to see the bigger picture, sort of to use that magical energy to really help us rise up and, you know, discover new parts of ourselves that maybe we haven't been able to connect to before. We also have Mercury stationing direct two days prior to this ingress. So Mercury will be very much encouraging us to think for ourselves, to stand up for ourselves, to have our own opinions. Um, Aries is very much about the self, to stand in our own lane and to stand in our integrity and to speak and understand and know our truth rather than being influenced by what we are being told or what we're being sort of um, programmed to understand. Um, Mercury direct in Aries is going to sort of activate and encourage new ideas and new ways of thinking, new narratives, a new way of kind of seeing and understanding our world and our situation. And it's also very sort of leadership pioneering energy. So taking us into places that perhaps, you know, we haven't been before. And then, of course, we still have Jupiter and Uranus very close together. I've talked extensively about the energy that that conjunction brings. But what is interesting in this chart is that the sun is at seven degrees of Taurus. And I always look at the numbers or certainly the numbers always talk to me. And seven is the number of understanding. It is the number of wisdom, of intuition, um, of the intellect. It is very inquisitive, it's very thoughtful, but it's also the number of the spiritual seeker and a desire to know more, to uncover, to discover, and to really consider the truth and the meaning of life. So again, you know, this is happening at seven degrees next, right next to the part of fortune, which is also at seven degrees. So just sort of really um, reassuring us of the fact that, you know, there is huge opportunity and joy and fulfillment through the part of fortune to be had by embracing this sort of need and desire and calling to ask the questions and to consider new ways and embrace new understanding. So, so we've got some really interesting, very inspiring, very exciting themes coming through through just to sort of round off the month for us. And, you know, I will be sending out my newsletter um, next week with some information about what we can expect in May. If I have time, I may come on and do a video just to kind of recap what I put in the newsletter and maybe expand on some of the themes. Um, but if you're not on my mailing list and you want to be, you can sign up for that through my website, spiralbright.co.uk. And um, yeah, I, again, you know, my sort of intention with these videos is to share what is speaking to me, what is coming through, what stands out, working with my intuition, bringing in the fixed stars and the cosmic energies, you know, appreciating the fact that there are so many astrologers out there that we all have something you know, similar, but also something different to bring to the table. So if you've got this far and you are with me and you are subscribed to my channel, then I really appreciate the fact that you are here. Feel free to comment and share, like the video, that really helps me. And um, yeah, just so much gratitude to you for being here and for walking with me on this incredible journey, quite frankly, um, challenging to the extreme, but also very exciting and full of hope at the same time. So thank you so much for watching and I will be again with you soon.